In modern day America, we normally think of werewolves as something from a bad movie or perhaps a teen's romance series. That hasn't always been the case. The very first series of witch trials held in Switzerland between 1428 and 1447, at least 367 men and women were executed. Many were executed for witchcraft, but some were executed as werewolves. It was thought at the time that some witches had made a pact with the devil in order to turn into a wolf and roam the countryside attacking livestock and humans. There are many confessions. Of course, these confessions came out under torture. In 1589, Germany had the most famous werewolf trial in history. A mass murderer named Peter Stump stalked and killed 14 children and two women, including his own son. He mutilated and devoured the bodies eagerly. In the case of his son, he even ate his brains. When Stump was captured and put on trial, he claimed to have been given a magic belt by the devil that let him transform into a greedy, devouring wolf. His execution is one of the most brutal on record. He was put on the wheel, flesh was torn from his body, his arms and legs were removed, he was beheaded and his body burned on a pyre. That was centuries ago in Europe. Let's flash forward in time a little bit and come back to America. Georgia in the 1860s to be precise. One of the wealthier families in the area was the Burt family. The matriarch of the family, Mildred Owen Burt, was widowed young at 37 years old. She had seven children, two daughters, Sarah and Isabella. Isabella was an introvert who preferred to spend time in the library after spending time with other people. Like many in that time period, she discovered books on the occult and the supernatural. In time, she started spending every waking hour studying the occult. As her studies grew deeper, she started developing serious headaches that could only be cured with opium. It was around this time her family started to worry. Her appearance started to change. She was no longer taking care of herself. Her eyebrows grew bushy, her hair was unkempt. She rarely smiled. Isabella took to roaming the woods alone at night. Like any small town, the locals began to talk. Around this time, something started killing livestock in the area. Cattle and sheep were turning up mutilated. Coincidentally, these mutilations were on the same nights as Isabella's walks. The locals suspected a wolf perhaps even a pack of wolves. They put together a hunting party to head out to find what was killing the animals. One full moon night, they finally found their prey, a large wolf in a field surrounded by dead cattle. One of the party fired off a round, but missed a kill shot, hitting the wolf in the front paw. The wolf was suddenly gone apparently into the woods, but out of the woods came an injured Isabella Burt. Apparently she'd injured her arm some way, running through the woods, heading for home. The next morning, the locals were talking about a werewolf. Isabella's mother immediately got her passage from Savannah, Georgia to Europe to see a doctor for her headaches. Legend says the doctor was actually a specialist in lycanthropy and had a cure. After Isabella left, there were no more animal mutilations. Upon her return, the locals still looked at her with suspicion and followed her for the rest of her life. On her death in 1911, the local people still protested her being buried in sacred ground. Better heads and perhaps money overruled superstition, and she was laid to rest in Owen Cemetery in Talbot County, Georgia.